Hello there, DML Gamer. Today is the release of the new Dragon Grid event, and unfortunately, it's much worse than we thought it would be. Now, that doesn't mean everything about this event is bad, but there is a little bit of a really important thing that they failed to mention in their initial teaser videos for this event. And, uh, you know, we found out that we were going to need up to 6,000 Holy Talismans to unlock Tyrannos, of course, which they've said isn't really doable free-to-play unless you get insanely lucky, which means it's not going to happen. The issue with this is we all assumed that we'd get 1,500 Talismans from the tickets and then we'd unlock a dragon. The problem is, the dragons themselves only unlock when you get to a specific level. Which means that if you were going for Aurum Lumen, for example, you need to get to 120 levels in this grid event to even unlock the dragon to then spend your Holy Talismans. So not only do you need to collect 1500 Holy Talismans per Tyrant, you also have to unlock it from the tower. Which means that if you Wanted to go for Armored Phasm, for example, he unlocks after 5 levels, Demonia's 35, Prisma's 70, Auron Lumen is 120 levels of the grid event. And right now, we've already had people losing on some of the levels at this stage, so even this is like prior to level 10 even, which means that some people are going to have to redo, redo, redo levels through the grid event, I don't know how doable a level 120 is, and is level 120 actually doable with the Fire Dragon? I guess that will remain to be seen, but this was a really, really important thing that they conveniently left out of all of their teaser videos and information, and I don't think that they're going to get people forgive them for that. Um, it's confused a lot of people as well because they weren't expecting it, but that is the introduction to the major issue with this event. Either way, this is the main event screen for the Dragon Grid, and of course we've got all those new Tyrant Dragons like Tyrannos and all the others. Tyrannos isn't doable if you're free to play. But then we've got Tyrant Chests, which are very similar to the chests that we've seen many times before. We've got Holy Talismans, up to 50 of them in there. We've got Dragons available each week, Decorations, VIP tickets, you can take a look at the drops in there. So. For each 100 Tyrant Chests open, you can get 40 Legendary Dragon Pieces as the expected average drops, which is more or less what I'd expect. But there is no way to get these Tyrant tickets out of the dungeon anymore. So before, what we used to do is we used to go over to the dungeon, do loads of dungeon runs, and in every single dungeon chest, you would get tickets in the Ancient and Divine events. That's not the case with the Tyrant event. Instead, the only way to get tickets is by playing the new Dragon Grid event. And this Dragon Grid event works around this idea or concept of energy, quite similar to map energy, and uh, if you lose on a specific level, you will lose all of your collected rewards for that level. So that is something to keep in mind as you go through this, and of course this is going to be our first time ever looking at Dragon Grid. And we've got Paola here, also known as Paulo, here to guide us through the event. So, oh, um, hi, I'm, I'm Paulo. Welcome to the Dragon Grid. We'll be going on a new exciting journey to collect treasures and meet new dragons. It should be interesting. Follow me. Let's enter this maze and see what's inside. Don't worry, it's not as scary as it seems. I checked. Then we've got the dungeon dragon there, which if you manage to unlock it, you're going to get bonus attack and bonus max attack slash power, which... We don't have that Dungeon Dragon unlocked yet, because you're going to have to unlock that every single week if you want that bonus, which I'm not going to do. So we're going to play this for one energy on level one. So these mazes are quite puzzling, literally, but like most labyrinths, they're full of treasures and dangers. Speaking of which, some wild dragons are on the attack. Let's try to battle one by moving our dragon to the left. So it's going to force us to go to the left here. And then, oh no, you're hurt, but don't worry, delicious fruit will restore our poor dragon strength. Let's collect the one above us. So, going on that dragon tile took out our health, and then we go up, and then we're going to gain plus four. 
So a ticket has appeared in the maze, but we can't reach it yet. A wild dragon is in the way, and it's looking for a challenge. We'll have to defeat it. Then it wants us to go back down, and then it wants us to go down again. And there we go, we've collected a ticket. But if we were to lose on this level, we would lose that ticket. So that's how it works. But of course, this is the tutorial, so if I manage to lose this, please, just, that's it, channel terminated. Anyway, gosh, you did it. I think you're ready to take the lead, trainer. Just pay attention to where you move and keep an eye on your power. Use your brain and you'll be fine. Oh, and if you ever get stuck, use these special potions for a bit of help. Good luck. So then it says you won, all tickets found, next level. And you have to use energy to go up to the next level, which is something I am not happy or pleased about at all. I don't understand why we'd have to do that every single time. There could have been a different way to do it, but obviously I understood that that was what was going to happen this time. So now we are out of this tutorial bit here, and you'll see that we've got the chest on the right hand side, we've got the food beneath us and to our left, and all of these grids are random. There are a set number of, say, attack tiles, health tiles and such that will spawn on a level, but the order in which they spawn is random. So your level 1 may look completely different to mine, for example. Like if we go over that chest, and then we'll just go over the extra food tiles for now, giving ourselves bonus HP. And you'll see that now we've got a ticket that's spawned in. So if we want to collect the ticket, we'd go through this dragon, go over here to collect the ticket. And we only needed to find one ticket to pass this level. And so because of that, we get times one tickets. And then we open up our chest. So the chest that you pick up, if you lose on that level, you will lose the chests as well. And out of these chests here, there is the potential to get really big drops, like times 100 tyrant tickets, times 100 gems, but the drop chance is incredibly low. So don't be banking on that for any event success. The chests will more than likely be dropping rewards like this, the times 5 here that we got. So I think some of the main rewards that people are going to want to go for uh, obviously going to be the chests. They're going to be like a no-brainer. And obviously rather than going up and hitting the dragon, we'd rather go and, you know, hit the food tiles instead. So like we'll go down, we'll avoid the higher damage dragons as well if we can. But again, the order in which they spawn is going to be random. So you don't know if the next tile is going to be, say, another dragon or if it's going to be another food tile. There is a set number that's going to spawn in, but I don't see any way for us to know that as a player. But, you know, we'll go through that. We'll get another ticket. That's ticket one out of one. So we get to keep those, and then out of the chests, we got a VIP ticket. That is wonderful. I don't mind VIP tickets. So I can't believe it. I'm, I'm not just meeting my greatest hero and biggest inspiration. I'm escorting her on a top-secret dragon-finding mission. And I'm about to introduce her to my g girlfriend. Oh, oh gosh, suddenly I'm as bashful as Ned. Arya X Eliza, this is the best thing about this event so far. I'm not gonna lie. Easy there, kiddo. I'm sure I don't need to remind you. This is no joyride. If my research is sound, we're about to deal with some tough customers and I'm not just talking about the Vikings. Miss Portia, please leave me here and save yourself. Ah, a nice warm welcome to offset the Vikalandian chill, Aya. What's with the pipsqueak and the, um, ahem, mm. That is a questionable statement, considering Iola's... Never mind. Nice to meet you, ma'am. Eliza, this is the legendary, iconic, super mega powerful, awesome dragon trainer and war hero, Miss Portia Penans, and her research student, Paula. Dragon Girl's enthusiasm is binding as always, or blinding as always, but she's right. Mind your manners, Eliza. You're in the presence of a truly legendary warrior. Hmm. I didn't think humility or honor were concepts that Vikings understood, especially not the Dunkel Viking himself. I have to say, this is incredibly boring. There isn't anything moving in the background. Like, this, this still image can only keep me entertained for so long. Anyway. Look out, there are traps in this room. You need to be really careful. The trap next to you is active, so let's try moving to the left. So now they're going to force us to do a left movement. Phew, now that trap is harmless. You can pass through it without getting hurt. Let's continue through the maze, trainer. So it looks like what happens is you move, and then it will go down into an inactive state, and then you can step off of it. 
on it, which I was expecting it to be a little bit more like active, inactive, active, inactive. But it seems like it's not quite like that. It seems that there's a slight delay on it. So what a relief. You'll be much safer now that you know about active and inactive traps. Be careful and good luck. So that's going to be slightly different. But for instance, it's going to be too damage if we step on that. So I'll just step on it for an example. We're going to go down to 20 HP. So we do have to wait until it actually says zero, rather than it changing as we actively move, which is what I expected to happen. That would be a little bit more, uh, I don't know, active in terms of how it works. <laughs> active and inactive. Uh, but no, I guess it's a little bit more simplistic than I was thinking it was going to be. Now we've got two more energy to spend for the next level. And you'll see that now we've got these traps dealing four damage, this radiant dealing four damage as well. So we do want to try and avoid the four damage tiles as much as possible. We've got a zero damage trap tile, so we can step on that. Another zero damage trap tile, so we can step on that. And so I think it's going to be an important concept to try and make sure that we keep to with uh, these active and inactive traps. Like, we shouldn't just be standing on traps all the time that are, you know, active, because that wouldn't be wise. Like, now they've gone back down again, so we'll go and step on that one. That one's gone down again, so we're going to step on that one. That one's gone back to zero, so we're going to go and collect that food again. So, you know, it makes sense. You've just got to try and make your way around the higher damage tiles. We're kind of stuck here, and this kind of sucks, because I think we're going to have to take at least three damage anyway. Go up and then go back up for this tile. Probably would have been better than going the other way. And now we're going to have to take four damage no matter where we go. So I guess we'll go this way so that then we can go back on the zero damage tile again. But you see, we're just full of dragons at the moment. Where are my healing tiles? There's one. There's a lovely healing tile. Um, but maybe we'll step on that one first and then we will make our way around. There's two healing tiles now, so I'm going to go back over to those. And we do need to hit two tickets this time around. So we could go back here, then up, and then left. And you see, we avoided taking damage there. So it's about trying to, if you've got an active trap around you, trying to sort of skirt around it so that then you can re-step on it as a zero damage tile, which might be a little bit complicated to understand to begin with, but we should be Gucci for the most part. Um, and that one should go down, which it has. And now we've got a ticket here and we've got a chest there. I would really like to collect this chest if we can, which we should be able to, given these damage numbers, I think. So there we go. And now we can go back on this ticket. And there we go. Times two tickets. That level is done. So it's been pretty simple so far. I can see this getting a lot more complicated as we get into higher damage numbers and such. So we'll go on to the next level as well, and we will see what it brings. So I'm going to clear that tile first. Um, I'm going to go left, then right, so that we can try and push the, the food closer to us. But also remember that we've got a max amount of HP or power that we've got on our dragon. So like, for instance, collecting this 5 HP, we're going to end up not being able to collect one of those HP points. So we could always save it and say click on the, the zero tile there. And then we could go, say, back down again and then go back to the left, for example, just as an example of what you can do. Obviously, at the moment, we're in the middle of a bit of a pickle. So then we could go down, click on that tile, and ew, there's, there's no real good options here this time. Um, I'm wondering if we go up, will this right-hand tile come over to our left? It will. And then we can go that, go back forward, then we go left. So... I think learning the tile manipulation for how they spawn in is going to be important for this as well. And obviously, if it makes sense, it probably does make sense, like there. Um, but remember that it is random as to what is going to spawn in for you. So you may just get stuck and there was nothing that you could have done because you just got absolutely destroyed by RNG. It can definitely happen. Obviously, we hope that that doesn't happen to ourselves but it probably will at some stage. So these early levels might be a lot easier to, you know, get through for now, but it's going to be later on that's going to be the make or break for how good this event is or not. 
but you know i guess for now we will collect these food bits because we've got a ticket up there to go and collect and when we go on to the next level it will put our hp slash power back up to 20 out of 30 so we don't need to worry about going say through these two tiles to collect that ticket because we're going to get our hp back for the next level anyway so you can take a few risks on your way through for example but make sure you don't go down to zero by the time that you know you're getting through the level that would be very bad arena as a or arena energy as a reward isn't too bad but you know we do kind of like tickets and tickets are kind of required for those tyrant dragons but it is what it is but either way on this level here it says next level is two energy and you'll see i don't have any energy so we're gonna have to wait and this is the other major problem with this event you'll see that the timer says that we'll get more energy in an hour and four minutes this means that when the event starts you're going to be having to log in every three and a half hours at the beginning of the event in order to use your energy. And like for this event, I've already missed over six hours of this event because I wasn't at home. So I've already missed out on six hours worth of energy refreshes. And considering the fact that we don't know how much leeway we have in this event, having to log in every three and a half hours to start with is much worse in terms of requirement than it was for you know the reset based events which were every six hours saying that as we go higher in the dragon grid event we will get more energy and that means that we will also um the recharge rate will go up but i think uh, the ratio is going to make it so that we won't have to log in quite as often as at the beginning but it's not really going to go far beyond six if it does at all as in six hours so they've essentially said that they've, you know, gotten rid of the resets, but it's more or less the same thing, if not even worse now. So I'm not feeling too positive about that. But anyway, for doing those grid levels, we have now unlocked Armored Phasm. And this means that now we can unlock or we can open up those ancient chests and we can get um, Holy Talismans, which we could then spend on Armored Phasm. But until you get, like, if you want a Demonia, you would have to get to level 30 in the grid event, and then you're allowed to spend Holy Talismans on the dragon. You cannot purchase this dragon using Holy Talismans until you get to this set level. And that is a big problem, because if you don't get to level 120, you're not going to be getting Auron Lumen, and the balancing will have to be so that we can get there with a fire dragon without any problems if we even want to have the chance to unlock Auron Lumen. And I mean, a few people were interested in Auron Lumen because it was the energy light dragon, which arguably is one of the most useful, if not the most useful dragon in this event, purely from an elemental standpoint. But stats also matter, of course. But that's the reason a lot of people are going to take it, because burnout, right? But, until you get to level 120, you don't even have the option. We've also got a Talisman Generator here, and of course you can buy a Talisman Generator. Even if you buy this Talisman Generator day one, hour one of the event, it's not going to generate even close to how many Talismans you need for a single Tyrant. I think it's something like 23 to 25%. Of the talismans that you'd need to unlock a single tyrant is how many it would produce. So is that really worth eight pounds? Not really. Like not really at all. It, it's barely going to get you anything at all. You're not going to get a dragon out of it. Put it that way. It'll help. But I don't think it's worth it at all. Considering the payout. So that's another really depressing thing. And then it says, play the Tyrant Altar event to earn extra rewards. And then based on how many talismans you spend, we have the paid and the free section. This looks awful, by the way. I hate the UI for this event so much. Sorry, out of all the things I could complain about, I know it's the UI, but it's it's very garish. Like, I don't like this at all. But maybe that's just me. Anyway, we've got the paid section, which of course we've got things like 100 gems, 
lots of dragon tokens. In the free section, we've got 10 tyrant tickets, 25 gems, 2 extra gem relics, a worthless amount of gold, 5 VIP tickets, a sacred apple, more extra gem relics, tickets, an absolutely piss-take amount of food. Why do we even have these in here? This is so bad. Especially for a player at my level, like 500,000 food isn't enough for anything. This is pointless. We shouldn't even have these as rewards. Literally, just don't even give it to me. I don't want 500,000 food. It takes me nowhere. Like, it's just a waste of a milestone. Like, I'd rather them just have a 3.3k milestone and a 4.5k milestone. Because that's how worth... Like, it's just worthless. It's worth nothing to me. And obviously, if you were a brand new player, I could see that being different. But this is not acceptable for a max level, max dragon level player. It's just not. It's ridiculous. Especially at such a high amount of talismans as well. Like, this is ridiculous. Anyway, that is my mini rant about this as well. Of course, you can purchase energy as well, which is what they're expecting you to do, really. And uh, as always, it's incredibly overpriced. And if you don't really know how to play the event properly, chances are you could end up just wasting all of this anyway. Obviously, the more energy you've got, the better off you're going to be. But I don't think any of this is worth it, personally, just because of the sheer cost. And you can buy tickets using gems. So, for example, we've got 550 Tyrant tickets, which you can purchase with 4,500 gems. It's a lot of gems. And the reality is, you might end up getting tons of, like, times one drops or times three drops. And you've got to think that you need 1,500 talismans per dragon. And so, essentially, this is the tier that you would need if you wanted a single Tyrant. Like, you would, it's going to be a drop rate of roughly three talismans for every chest that you open, so for every ticket. So if you wanted to get a single tyrant out of your gems, you'd have to spend 4,500 gems in this exchange, which is ridiculously overpriced. But considering the only way that you can actually get tickets now is through the grid event, I have to say that it just seems like all of this is incredibly, incredibly overpriced. Like, that's that's me trying to think of it from a spender's perspective, even. Like, I'm not telling people you can't spend or you, you shouldn't spend. What I am saying is that if you are a spender, all of these are incredibly overpriced for the value. Especially considering that tyrants... They might have a use on a team, but I don't think they're going to become an essential part of a team. And then you've got to enchant them as well, which the only way to get enchantment materials is going to be the Horrific Arena or this event, which doesn't look like it's paying out tons of mats right now. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's quite disappointing. We do have these chests, of course, which I'll open ten of them just to start off this week. And the thing to remember about these chests is that it will change every single week, the chests that we get. Which will give you the chance to get, you know, legendary, epic, and rare. Oh, look at times 50. So you'll have the chance to get these chest dragons every week but the thing that you need to remember is that you need to spend your tickets every single week because if you don't you're gonna end up wasting your tickets which means you'll waste your opportunity to get holy talismans so make sure that you spend your tickets every single week before the end of the week that's my warning to you you don't want to be wasting your tickets so don't waste them if anything, I think just spending them straight away is probably the smartest thing to do. That way you don't forget. I know that lots of people used to like, you know, hoarding how many chests they've opened so that they can keep track. But I think it's very likely that people will end up not spending their tickets this time around since it's every week rather than just two chapters. So, I don't know. That's the easy way to avoid wasting anything. But it's up to you. You can do whatever the heck you want, my friend. But that is the new Dragon Grid event. One plus side to this is that it does appear that Dragon Grid is not going to be a very time-consuming event. 
as in all that we're going to have to do for Dragon Grid is log in and use the energy. We're not going to have to do any super annoying tasks or anything else like we had to before with the other events. That's one big plus. The problem is that, you know, the event doesn't really bring very much to do. The only thing to do is actually log in and just do the grid event, which if that's going to be 30 seconds to a minute every three and a half to every six hours or whenever you can log in, there's not really going to be a lot to do for the event, which is both a blessing, but also it doesn't really interest me in any way, if you get what I mean. Like, I don't want us to have to do really incredibly boring, monotonous dungeon grinding, which we may have to do, depending on how difficult those later levels are. Like, if we get stuck, that means no more rewards. So it's really going to come down to how doable this Dragon Grid event is with the Fire Dragon. And 120 levels? I have my doubts. I'm just saying it right now. I'm very, very doubtful. I would love to be proven wrong, and maybe it is doable with the Fire Dragon. But came lot to have a track record of if you think that they could do something that negatively impacts you, they will do it three times worse than that. And I think that this event is a fantastic example of that. Like, I don't like this UI and these shop features at all. It's intentionally confusing so that then people get confused and don't know what's going on. This is a tactic that Game, mobile game developers use all the time, it's what Unite uses, it's what other mobile games use. And the fact that the dragons, to actually get their pieces, is stuck behind here, I don't like it at all. I think it would be much better to just like have a singular click button, go here. But locking these dragons behind levels and, at the same time, specific talisman amounts, obviously, to actually get the Tyrant tickets without spending, you're gonna have to get up to a certain level anyway to actually get enough rewards. But this means that if you were someone that was gonna spend just on Holy Talismans, you're also gonna have to play the Grid event. So even if you're a spender or a whale, you're still gonna have to get up to level 120 anyway. You know what they call that? They call that pay to lose. Or they call it pay to pay. Because it means that Rather than us having the old method, which was just open chests after grinding the dungeon to get talismans and then buy what you want, now we've got two sets of unlock criteria. And this was far worse than I I could have ever imagined it would be. Like, this is, this is shocking to me that anyone would ever find this acceptable. I can get maybe someone saying, well, you know, in order to make people want to play the event, they, they're going to... Make it so that you put in the effort to unlock a dragon. And that would be fine if by getting to level 120 we automatically unlocked the dragon. But that's not what happens, is it? We get to level 120, if even possible, to then have to spend all of our currency on the dragon. And that is my issue. It could have just been one unlock criteria. But that wasn't enough for them this time. And... I don't know, there's nothing I can say to defend this event. Like, you saw me play the Dragon Grid, these first few levels have been doable. You know, if you use your head, uh, you don't step on the wrong tiles without thinking. You know, these first few levels have seemingly been okay, my RNG has been okay. But I'm not too sure how it's going to go later on. Obviously, if I play some of this event, we'll find out. Same with other players, because, you know, to actually get a good grasp of this event, we have to play it. But if we start getting stuck in this Dragon Grid event, not that far in the future, like maybe, say, level 60, level 80, I'm just going to stop playing the event. Because there is absolutely no incentive, personally, to be playing an event, a Tyrant event, when the only dragon I had any interest in, really, was Auron Lumen. And if I cannot get that dragon with the regular fire dragon, this event is a complete total flop for me. And I'm sure that there are lots of players that are going to say the same thing. Obviously not everyone's going to think the same 
you know, not everyone's going to have the same opinion of the event. Everyone has their own things that they like. Maybe someone likes the idea somehow of double blockading these dragons behind two pay-to-win methods. Maybe someone likes that. But personally, and I've seen a lot of complaints on lots of different social media. So that's not just YouTube. That's not just Discord. It's not just Facebook. I have seen complaints everywhere about this in particular. And also, of course, the complete RNG of the Dragon Grid. You don't know what's going to spawn in. You could get screwed over. You could get a chest that has 100 Tyrant tickets in it. Or you could get a chest that's got like 5,000 food in it. And that is a big problem. These shield items that we've got, by the way, we can use them. The cost of this, as you can see, is 100 gems, which is a ridiculous cost. And I reckon that these are going to be integral to getting through those later levels, at least at a certain point. And obviously 100 gems isn't something that people are going to be willing to spend for a one-time use shield. So... This is a ridiculous... Look at that. Prevents taking damage the first time after activation. Once the damage is mitigated, the effect ends. And it's 100 gems. You know, I screw everything else that I said about the insane costs of this event. This! This is ridiculous! 100 gems for a one-time, one-tile you shield! I guess it says taking damage, so if you step on a health tile, it wouldn't activate it, but that's a hundred gems for one movement! <laughs> I, 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 it genuinely baffles me that someone created this and thought that players would look at this and not think that this was obscene. And from what we saw, you can get these shields randomly out of chests, I believe, but the drop rate probably isn't very high on it, because if they're going to value each shield, which is a singular movement at 100 gems each, they're not going to want you to have easy access to these. So, as much as I wanted to feel positively about this event, I'll be honest, it hasn't given me many reasons to be positive, and I'm not. I would, honestly speaking, if I had no interest in informing people about this event and seeing the balancing, if I was playing this game purely on my own, not recording it, not talking in the community about it, I would not be playing this event right now. But I do want to give it a fair shot and, you know, just in case this event somehow feels a lot better in the later stages, I want to open my heart to it in case that happens. I'm not convinced right now that that will happen, but I do want to give it at least a fair shot as much as I can. But the reality is there's like 12 hours in the middle of the day where I cannot log in for this event. So how much value am I going to get out of these energy spawning systems? Probably not a lot. And it's not just going to be me that's impacted by that. Anyone that, you know, has a... A work life where you're going to be out for the majority of the day. Probably going to be the same for you. This game needed to be cross-platform, like Dragon City, like the other mobile games that are its direct competitors. It needed that five, six, seven years ago. And like in my case here, I'm screwed. I'm screwed purely because they cannot put in cross-platform play for this game. And that's another thing that really, really sucks about this. So, what's the TLDR on this event, if it wasn't already obvious? Um, the energy system it is way too fast if we're expected to log in for every, you know, three and a half to four hours. It is much worse than the previous events, if that's the case. The chests resetting every week gives you the chance to get more dragons, but unless we can get them from the grid, we're not going to be getting more rewards. So I hope that the amount of tickets that we get does give us a good chance of getting each of these chest dragons, but I'm doubtful of that. The entire shop system purchasing these dragons is absolutely horrific, and I think them removing this system immediately would be in their best interest, personally. And the overall cost of the Tyrant event, you're only expected to get one to two Tyrants if you are a free-to-play player. 
That is what Gameloft have said, which means that you will be getting fewer rewards than we could have gotten from the previous event free to play. So, considering that TLDR, basically, uh, game sucks. <laughs>